Unlocking the mystery, how to determine the volume. Hello, dear learners. Today, we're diving into an intriguing phrase that often pops up in both everyday conversations and academic contexts. Determine the volume. Understanding this concept is not just about adding a new phrase to your vocabulary. It's about unlocking a practical tool you can use in various scenarios. So, let's embark on this journey together and explore what it means to determine the volume, how it's used, and why it's important. When we talk about determining the volume, we're referring to the process of finding out the amount of space that a substance or object occupies. This phrase is most commonly used in the contexts of science and mathematics, particularly in physics and chemistry. However, it's not limited to academic use. You might come across this phrase in cooking, when filling up your car with gasoline, or even when trying to figure out if a new piece of furniture will fit in your room. Volume can be measured in liters, gallons, cubic meters, cubic feet, and so on, depending on the context and the system of measurement being used. The process to determine this volume varies widely depending on the shape and state, solid, liquid, or gas, of the object or substance in question. Understanding how to determine the volume of different objects or substances is crucial for a variety of reasons. In a scientific context, it allows researchers and scientists to carry out experiments accurately, calculate densities, and predict behaviors of substances under different conditions. In everyday life, knowing how to find the volume can help you in cooking, measuring ingredients, in personal projects, like gardening or DIY, and when making decisions about purchases, like how much paint to buy to cover a certain area. Moreover, being familiar with this concept enhances your problem-solving skills, making you better equipped to tackle challenges that involve spatial reasoning and resource management. Determining the volume varies by the state of the material and the shape of the object. Let's break it down. For liquids, volume is often determined using measuring cups or graduated cylinders, marking the amount of space the liquid takes up. For regular shaped solids, like cubes or spheres, there are specific mathematical formulas. For example, the volume of a cube is found by cubing the length of one of its sides. For irregular objects, one common method is to use water displacement. By measuring how much the water level rises when the object is submerged, you can determine the volume of the object. Understanding these methods and when to apply them is key to accurately determining volume in various contexts. I hope this exploration of how to determine the volume has shed light on not just the meaning of the phrase, but also its practical applications in both academic fields and daily life. Whether you're mixing ingredients for a recipe, filling up your car, or conducting an experiment, Knowing how to find the volume of objects and substances around you is an invaluable skill. Keep practicing, stay curious, and until next time, happy learning.